Hey everyone, this is Austin Schur here with We Write About Music, and today I'm here with Chris Scott, Steve Altonen, and Doug Roskovitz of The Quilts. They've just released their debut single, Sweet Molasses, and I am incredibly excited to talk to you guys about it. Chris, Steve, Doug, mm. how are you all doing today? Doing great. Fantastic. 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 Awesome. So where are you all individually located at the moment? <laughs> Well, well, I'm, uh, Doug, Doug, I'm, in Cleveland. I'm the, I'm the one that's uh, an outlier. I'm in Cleveland, so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm about like maybe three and a half minutes from Chris in uh, the greater Cincinnati area, Very but cool. I'm originally from the Cleveland area next to Doug, so. Okay. I'm kind of the transitioning piece between the two. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, well, when, when Stephen says three and a half minutes, literally me and him are within three and a half minutes of each other. So we I believe it. <laughs> conveniently live right down the road. It's awesome. <clears throat> Very cool. Well, I'm obviously really excited to be talking to you guys about this single. Um, getting a bit of a background on it beforehand was super helpful, but it also just proved to show how powerful of a song it really is. Would you guys mind opening up a bit on what it's all about and what inspired you to help write it? Chris, why don't you start that one? Yeah, I'll start it. Um, so really the idea of the song, um, Stephen just had this amazing melody for this for this tune. And, uh, you know, when, when he brought the idea to me, um, I think, Doug, this was right at the beginning of when you kind of came into the band and Mike, our drummer, was kind of coming into the band. Um, you know, when I when I heard him kind of play the, the, the main riff to the song, I, I knew that there was a story there that that I had written in the past uh, about the opioid crisis that actually Stephen has has played a similar song in my other band, The Summit, uh, that had to that that addressed the same the same issue about the opioid problem that we have really all over the country, uh, but it really hits home here in the Ohio um, in, in Ohio. Uh, it, it, it's a, it's a major problem, and um, you know we've we've all and I I won't speak for Stephen and Doug, but. You know, um, you know, we've all been touched by it um, in some way, uh, I think directly and indirectly. Um, and, uh, you know, and I've been a big activist um, for, for getting people help that they need uh, for it. And so when Stephen kind of played this riff and it really just kind of had this down home, just this very rootsy feel to it. Um, you know, I started taking a lot of the lyrics that I had had before for this idea and, and really just kind of put it together. And um, and I knew kind of instantly when I heard the melody that that this was the song that was going to be able to tell this story. And, you know, I talked to Stephen about it. And and again, I'll let Stephen kind of talk about what it means to him personally. But we just both kind of looked at each other. and We knew that it was a hard message to get out because it has affected us directly. Um, but it was one of those songs where we said, you know what, this is this is the time. This is the forum for it. And little did we know that it would be the first single um, off of off of the EP. But uh but yeah, man, it's it's just it's just a it's a story that I feel has gotten lost with the current COVID pandemic that's going on, totally. and um, and so we just you know I I felt it was the right time because it's always been hard to try to put out a message, um, especially to thousands and hopefully millions of people that 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 would affect people whether that's negatively, positively, you know, bringing back repressed repressed memories of something, but it was a story that we wanted to kind of put out there and support of those that need help and those that have people that um, are struggling with this crisis. So that's really where it kind of started. Nice. Steven, did you want to keep going on that? I feel like that answered it pretty well, but. Oh, he, he's got it. He's got it. Yeah. Got it. I was going to say, you know, for a debut single and for such a hard hitting subject and something that's really difficult to talk about, you guys have really made something beautiful sounding and as tough as it is like, the single itself, I've listened to it probably five or six times today, and it gets better every time. So even putting the message aside for just a moment and just focusing on the music, you, you guys have done a really fantastic job. Thank you. Thank I you. Say. Thank you. I, um, I, you know, it, it really just started from chasing a melody. Yeah. And, and then you chase mm -hmm. that melody and you try and figure out your emotions during that melody and you just kind of push it forward. And then the story starts to tell itself. Right. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, 
and so we had sort of touched on this a little bit before I hit record, but you guys had said that you were parts of different bands and that this is, you know, obviously your first single and a new project. I'd love to hear what you were a part of and how you kind of came together on this. Yeah, well, I mean, I'll, I'll start and I'll let kind of Stephen and Doug kind of talk about, you know, their, yeah, their venture. We'll just go in a roundabout way. Yeah. Here. <laughs> well, it's funny because that's how me and Stephen met. I mean, me and Stephen, you know, met, uh, he actually came to one of one of my, one of me and Mike, my drummer, who's our drummer, mm-hmm. who is not here. I say my drummer because it's the relationship's like Stephen and Doug, me and Mike have known each other for about 25 years. Sure. So it's got kind of that family atmosphere, right? You know, we've, we've been so close with each other that we just kind of combine forces. But, um, but Stephen actually came up to a show um, of ours, of, of me and my band, The Summit. Um, and it's more Americana, blues-based rock and roll. And, okay. and, and me and Stephen just kind of, we hit it off. I mean, he, he, he loved the sound. Um, I had heard a bunch of Stephen's stuff, but I loved, just loved his writing. His writing was just unbelievable. And, uh, and so we always toyed with the idea. This is going back about four years ago. Hey, let's put together a project, put together a project. Well, lo and behold, we asked Stephen, I asked Stephen out on tour. Uh, my band went out for the first, first time with ZZ Top on a tour uh, in 2018. And, um, you know, I asked Stephen out. I said, Stephen, we need a second guitar player to come out and play. And, and of course, because he's awesome, he's a badass, he came out and he did it. And just, it was just an unbelievable experience. And, um, and I think that was the moment when I knew that, you know, I, I'm surrounded by somebody very special uh, from a fr- songwriting standpoint. Um, but not only that, just a, a friendship standpoint, we, we have a lot of, a lot in common personally, you know, and, um, and then, you know, I'll let him kind of talk about Doug, but that's where Doug came in. I mean, we all three just have this, this enrichment of just so many different things musically, personally that we relate with. And, um, and we said, you know, Hey, let's, let's, let's put together a band. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Let's just write some songs, you know, no pressure. And, um, lo and behold, we started writing some really good songs and, and we said, you know, let's take this further. And that's really what happened. I mean, it just started naturally. I invited Mike into the project. Stephen and Mike had had a relationship uh, from touring in the summit with ZZ Top. And, um, and then, uh, you know, I think, Doug, you came out during another tour with REO Speedwagon. Mm-hmm. And that's where I met you for the first time. Um, so we all kind of met at this, uh, at this other project's, I guess, helm. And, um, you know, it just, it just created something extremely special. And, uh, and that's kind of where we're at. So awesome. I'll let Stephen kind of talk about him and Doug's relationship, but please, that's kind of where it really started for us. Oh goodness, it's Doug and my relationship. Uh, so I was in a high school band, um, which I love dearly, and I still love all those people in that band. And I think I played a show near Lake Erie, and Doug was in a different band. Uh, gosh, I must have been like 16 years old, and I saw him play, and I'm like, I have to get to know that guy. And uh, introduced myself after that show. Um, he kind of you know, like my band, I liked his band and that relationship just blossomed from that. Anything that I've done since then with growing such a great relationship with Doug, just, just trust as a friend and and trust as a musician, anytime I'm part of something, I always want Doug to be a part of that. And there were times where we we kind of went away, but gosh, there's dozens of bands just always calling on each other for advice for the bands we were in and help with writing and, and Doug is such a fantastic musician. He doesn't just play bass. He plays so many instruments and, you know, we both play multiple instruments. Um, it was just that like budding trust and budding relationship for, for years. If there's anything that I think he could benefit from and he could add to, because he adds so much to anything we do. Um, not only is he a best friend, but he's one of the best musicians I've ever played with. I think Doug has probably been a part of 99 of my 100 projects uh, and i'm very grateful for that uh, it, it's it's been an honor to play with him uh, and i really appreciate that with him awesome so Doug, Doug, you right 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 <laughs> yeah that's pretty good steve explained it pretty well we've been uh, we've been a part of a lot of bands uh that we always kind of just knew that we <clears throat> you know we would probably always be writing or playing music in some form you know for the rest of our lives just because we sort of just kind of knew we complimented each other um so yeah it's um it's been an interesting uh interesting process for this band it's a you know it's a little different like a lot of our the bands i've been in steve with 
or in with Steve, <laughs> uh, have been uh, a little bit heavier, heavier rock stuff. Um, and you know, this band's like a, a really good opportunity to, for like more variety, uh, a little more freedom, I think, too. Uh, so, so yeah, it's been it's been a good good time so far. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So not necessarily on this single, um, especially because it sounds like there's more on the way soon enough, but in sort of the grand scheme of everything that you're going to put out, what is the end goal? What are you guys trying to accomplish overall? I mean, I think, I think overall, you know, we are, we are not selling ourselves short of anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I can speak for Mike, who is no longer here, who, you know, Mike and my relationship is very much like Steve and Doug's. I think I told you. So it's, you know, we, we've done so much together. We trust each other. Um, and I think I could speak for him too. And I think I could speak for Doug and Steve is that, you know, there, there's, there's nothing that I don't think we, we won't, we won't try, you know, um, mm-hmm. we've been like, look, we've been in part of this industry for, for most of our lives, you know, sure. and we've, we've gone through the ups, the downs, more downs, more ups, you know, so the <laughs> dynamic is difficult and, and with music changing and the way that music's getting out to people and, you know, and, and a year from now, there's going to be something else that's going to drive people to music. So sure. it's just staying on top of that and staying on top of that game. I think for us, it's simple. It's just keep writing songs. I mean, I think if we keep this group, this core, you've got, like Steven said, you've got four songwriters in the band. You know, you've got right. four really good songwriters in the band. Um, and I, I think that's rare for, for, for groups, you know, to have, you know, a collective group that has, you know, songwriters that can be dynamic, that, that aren't afraid to be fearless. Um, and, and so for us, I think to answer your question, Austin, you know, we're, we're looking to take this project as far as we can, you know, um, you know, we've, we are willing to sacrifice, you know, current projects for this because we've, we've proven it to ourselves, um, mm-hmm over a very short amount of time, literally three or four months that, that the content that we're putting together, the songs that we're coming together are who, what we believe. And it's, it's all, it's all opinion. Right. But, but we're having fun and we, we think they're gold. We think that they're songs that everybody can relate to. Right. And that's, to me, that's why I do music. I do music to touch others and to, and to write with meaning and with passion. And, and, and we do that in quilts. And, and I, it's, you know, I'm just, I'm excited for the next adventure. Really am. So if, if yeah, I can actually add yeah, to that please, a little bit. Please. Um, <laughs> what, what, one of the best things about this project is that we're not in a box. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I, I, I've written heavy music. I've written light music. I've written music, you know, acoustic music. And they've never been able to fit all into one project. We can do all that. So we can venture out into all these different territories and really express ourselves fully. And I think that's the best thing about meeting these people and playing this music is mm-hmm. every song is going to be different. It's not going to be so different that it doesn't align with each other, but you're going to see extensions of each person's personality. And I, I think that's huge. It's kind of like a freedom as an artist. And I met these people and we can actually be free as artists. So I think that is huge. We can really express ourselves and that is the best gift an artist can actually get. I'm actually really happy that you just brought that up because my next thing here was going to be, you know, considering that you have only put out one single and that, you know, more is on the way, are you going to be looking to experiment? And it sounds like in this situation, because you're not, you know, you're not pigeonholing yourself into one sound. It sounds like you've done different things in the past that Mm -hmm. it does give that opportunity to kind of do whatever you want with no consequences. I have no doubts in my mind that it's going to sound good because I, you know, I'm convinced just based off this first single, but that you don't necessarily need to just keep doing the same thing, kind of do whatever you want at this point, whatever yeah, makes you happy at least. Yeah, that's that's what one of the cool things that Chuck put to us, Chuck Alcazian, you know, right. when he was when he was producing and editing these tracks, you know, he said he said every single track he's working on is different, and he said now yeah. that now you know you hear. Yes, you know, there's bands that have done that, but he's like, you know, you know, I, you can go from Sweet Molasses having this, you know, this very, you know, gritty, you know, he compared it like, you know, Jayhawks meets the Black Crows, and then you're going to another little teaser, another song, um, Cry Me a River, that is, that is just pure, it's pure Soundgarden, you know, it's pure just rock and roll, it's, right. it's elements of, 
uh, just uh, just just straight ahead, good old fashioned grunge rock and roll. So, you know, but he said at the end of the day, what I got out of doing this EP is that I found the quilts. I found a sound that is different. I found a sound that is in a lot of ways revolutionary, you know, and, and that to me was the biggest compliment that I think I could have ever gotten with this project is that, and I really knew at that moment, like, okay, you know what? You just justified everything that me, Steve and Doug and Mike are trying to do, mm -hmm. right? You know, because that was what we wanted to do. We all come from such a variety of a background. We just wanted to make sure it worked in the sense that we created a quilt sound. With all right. those influences, we created a quilt sound. And I think we've accomplished that. And we're That's excited to get the other tracks out. Most so. important thing. Yeah. Um, and so with that being said, for all of you, were there any specific artists or, you know, I suppose key albums in your life that inspired you to take this path as, as musicians? Steven? Doug, you Doug? want to take that one? Doug I, Doug, I think you want to start with that one, man. I think Doug wants to start with that one too, yeah. <laughs> Hit us with it, Doug. Oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> <Any album? laughs> um, yeah, uh, Band of Horses is one of them, Infinite nice. Arms. Uh, that's a pretty inspiring album for me. Um, uh, I, I would say artist-wise, Led Zeppelin. Um, there's just there's just so many influences. There's just a huge, huge variety of influences. You know, I think. Um, trying to think of what else. Three Eleven, some of the older Three Eleven albums, um, things like that. Uh, definitely, definitely Soundgarden. Um, sure. Stuff like that. But but yeah, it's it's a huge variety um and I, I i like a lot of the old like uh 90s funk stuff like chili peppers too you know of course just because i'm a bass player so <laughs> <laughs> you gotta appreciate that yeah. Um, but yeah there's a there's a wide range. i gotta go go ahead <laughs> no no go ahead <laughs> no it, i gotta go with when i when i look at like a diverse band i look at faith no more I look at a band yeah. that can do so many things yep. and then they can take a Commodore song <laughs> and put it on, on their record and make it phenomenal. Now, you know, we don't go that far out, but that, that's courage. When I, when I look at a group of people that can do all these different things, you know, absolutely faith no more, 100%. But then I'm really inspired by uh, Clutch. And, and I think mm -hmm. you'll see that in a lot of riffs coming up where they're very clutchy wrists, but I'm also inspired by uh, Refused and Hum and Smashing Pumpkins, but also Paul McCartney and Wings and Tom mm -hmm. Waits. So there's this just variety of like, if I love all this stuff, I should be able to bring all this stuff into the mix. So, exactly. but I, I, I think Faith No More would be the, uh, the benchmark of reaching out where I, where I wanna go. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think, thanks, Stephen, for taking mine. I was going to say Faith No More, uh, but since you already oh, did. There are no, uh, there are no wrong right. answers. It's all good. <laughs> I got plenty of more. I got plenty <laughs> more. Um, no, for me, I think, you know, it, you know, if I go back to when I first started becoming interested in, in writing music and playing music when I was a teenager and, and, and even a preteen, was really the Black Crows, Shake Your Moneymaker. Um, and man, the Black Crows to me were just, you know, when they came out, were just, they were a band you know, out of the early 90s, late 80s, that when everybody was going to, to grunge, they were just going to straight ahead, soul rock and roll, man. And, and that and that to me was just everything. Because, you know, I grew up on that. You know, I grew up on everything from, from Al Green to, you know, Sam Cooke to, to, you know, Otis Redding, you know, to, to, that kind of, to, get that, to that kind of stuff. And for me, you know, I also grew up on Led Zeppelin. You know, I think sure. Led Zeppelin won. I mean, just the rawness of that friggin' album, man. I mean... Uh, of Led Zeppelin, you, you can't get any more rock and roll than that. So, you know, and what they did, identifying this different sound, this heavier sound is fantastic. So I think that gives you kind of both extremes. You know, if you go Led Zeppelin one or you go Shake Your Money Maker or anything in between, you know, the Otis Redding, Sam Cooks, the Al Greens, that kind of stuff. I think for me, from a vocalist standpoint, that was it. But then growing up as a young musician, you know, starting my first garage band when I was like 13, 14 years old, you know, yeah, of course it was, it was Pearl Jam, it was Soundgarden, it was SDP, you know, it was that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I think, I think Pearl Jam's 
10 album, I think taught me how to be more of a lyricist. You know, um, mm -hmm. I think Eddie Vedder taught me really how to be a lyricist, how to be a songwriter in that regard, you know, um, not to discredit, you know, the, the greats, the Neil Youngs, the Bob Dylans, that kind of stuff. But sure. as a young, as a young artist playing rock and roll, I mean, that that really identified me with making sure that I'm writing stuff that really had some deep spiritual meaning was was listening to Eddie Vedder, you know, um, God, whether it was alive or whether it was black or whether it was, you know, uh, ocean. I mean, it, it just it taught me songwriting. And um, so I think that that kind of gives you kind of a little bit of an experience of where my head was. But I think at the end of the day, just from what you heard, it's just sure. such a hodgepodge of just so many different collective influences and um right. you know it's crazy so i think the obvious next question here is you know things are getting better around the u.s at least are we going to mm. see a quilts tour any sort of mini tour or any sort of live shows coming from you guys so without getting too specific yeah we've got we we've, we've got some some good stuff on the docket um some 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 national support dates um that we're trying to wrap up right now with some with some artists you probably know <laughs> um can't throw too much out right now because yeah. it's in the secrecy but um but yeah but no yeah we've got we've got stuff there will definitely be um you know quilts touring in support of this this summer later this summer and um you know it's so hard because you know so many you know so many talent agents are so you know they're so reluctant to say hey yeah you know we'll you know yeah let's 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 firm this up now you know they're they're trying right. to wait you know as long as they can but now exactly. yeah, we've got we've got we've got some exciting stuff we got some exciting stuff coming awesome well if you happen to be in the los angeles area i would love to see you guys i'm sure it'd be a good time for sure we'll just crash oh, your place sense, then. Pressure. Oh, we got a dog. Yeah, come on by. You can stay in my two bedroom apartment. Awesome. <laughs> Kill him. We'll make it work. <laughs> so. Oh, man. So uh, I'd love to get an in depth answer from each of you. You know, it sounds like you guys have been doing this for a while now, at least being in the music entertainment space. What is it that you enjoy the most about being artists and creatives as a whole? I mean, I'll go quick. Um, it's it's collaborating with other artists. I mean, plain and simple. I think you know, in a in an industry that that preaches individuality and competition, um, I don't see music and never have seen music, whether it's songwriting or whether it's performing, as competition. Um, sure. It's collaboration. It's creating scenes. It's 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 developing scenes. It's it's bringing scenes back. Um, and I think artists need to get, I, I think the industry needs to recognize that more. Uh, I think that when artists stick together and artists support each other, music is much better. It just really is, you know, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, I think social media kind of hurts that sometimes, but it also helps. Um, but uh, no, I, I just think it, for me, it's collaboration. It's, it's whether that's collaborating with another artist or whether that's collaborating with, um, you know, with, with, um, you know, an engineer, a producer, it doesn't matter, but sure. it's, it's collaboration. And, and that's what I love about the quilts is that we all collaborate, you know, we all, we all write music. And I think that's, that's fantastic. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Doug, you want to tackle that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to say something similar as uh, I think just uh, I'm along the lines of collaboration is, it's just great to to be creative, but also uh, you know have other people there to um, be sort of your sounding board and, and give you feedback. Because um, personally, I'm more you know I do write some songs, but I'm not like a as good of a songwriter as, as some people. Um, so it's like it's good to to be around other great musicians. You know, when I just have maybe I just have one riff and I don't have an entire song. Um, you know, and we can build off that, um, get other ideas from people. So, so yeah, I, I would say the same thing, you know, just collaborating with other really talented musicians is the best thing about it. So. Sweet. Uh, from my standpoint, uh, I feel compelled constantly to do this. It, it, it just makes sense to me. Um, right. Even if I was, well, 
for the years that I'm just writing alone and no one cares about anything that I'm doing, I still have to do that. I still have to make time for that. It's like, I'm not really creating anything. I'm just a lightning rod for inspiration. And it, it's just something like brushing your teeth that I have to be a part of constantly. And then when you can be a part of a group with other musicians that are so talented, and they can help hone that skill that you're working on. I mean, nothing could really be better. They're giving you uh, advice. Uh, we're creating something together. Uh, it's humongous. I'll be doing this until I'm, you know, until I pass from this earth. And I'm really awesome. lucky at this point to have these people that are actually interested and I'm interested in them. And then we're working together that I'm very lucky for that. Totally. It's like, it's like a brotherhood of, you know, what? like you have an idea and you want to bounce it off someone and someone's going to complete your baseline or whatever it might be. It's just nice to have that sort of backbone of friends to, to figure it all out with. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, I've only got a for couple sure. more questions for you guys, but I've really enjoyed talking to you so far. <laughs> We're yeah, about, likewise. Yeah, we're about a third or a little over a third into 2021 at this point, which is even crazy to admit. But what are some goals that you've set for yourself to hopefully accomplish by the end of the year? I mean, for me, I think, and I think for the band, I think we've all talked about this, but for me personally, it's uh, it's to get back on the road, right? I mean, you know, the pandemic has been locked up now for over a year. Um, yeah. I mean, I, 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 I'm not going to lie. I just, I miss, I, I miss being on the stage. I miss, I miss being in front of people. I miss, I miss more than anything. I miss, um, I miss converging with the fans. I miss uh, spending time at the merch booth, having conversations with real people. Um, you know, to me, it doesn't matter how big this band gets at the end of the day when, when we perform, I think that's what I look forward to the most. I know that sounds weird, but, but being able to just have conversations and to explain a song or to, you know, to talk to a young fan that's out there, that's, right. that's wanting to, that's wanting to get involved in music and, um, and just, and just being able to, to, to have those real conversations with people, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, I think that's, that's, so that's, that's my goal is, is for us to get back on the road and, and be awesome. able to have those, uh, those real conversations again. Yeah. <clears throat> that's what it's all about. It's all about connecting. Especially at smaller mm -hmm. shows when people come up to you afterwards and tell you how much they enjoyed your set. Like, that's what it's all about. Right. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about you, Stephen? What are the goals for the end of the year? I don't know. Lose 20 pounds and be able to do a backflip. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Uh, <laughs> awesome. no, I, I, I really want to get back uh, I want to play a show again. Uh, yeah. The energy of playing a show and connecting with people is humongous for me. Mm -hmm. uh, that That is huge. And I, I want to finish the full length. I want to get everything out there. Sure. We have so many songs that are just ready to be recorded and I want to get them ready. So I think playing shows and having the material available for people to listen to and enjoy, I, I think those are huge. Secondary again to uh, losing twenty pounds doing a backflip, but I'll be okay with that. <laughs> I think a backflip during the encore could really make for a memorable show. So you just start working on well, it. Now. Well, he thinks, well, my he daughter can do it, but I can't do it. <laughs> but we're not. Well, yeah, you got so the Doug, perfect Doug, teacher Doug, right that there. Down. Stephen, I can fall backwards. That's about all I can do. <laughs> Stephen backflip encore every show, <laughs> every single show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. All right. All right, what about you, Doug? Front flip? Yeah, yeah. Front <laughs> flip. And also lose 20 pounds. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much pretty much the same. Um, playing shows, because, you know, I've we've practiced together, but sure. we haven't, uh, Steve and I have played tons of shows together, but I haven't played a show with Chris and Mike live yet. So, uh, so yeah, playing shows is the number one priority. And then, just getting uh just getting a couple more singles out there so totally. you know people have people have uh some more stuff to uh to listen to and uh um yeah recording i'd like to just at least get into the studio at least once by the end of the year so 
Awesome. And that's coming. That's coming. We 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 are we are locking in time for that this summer to to get back up and uh, awesome. hopefully get up to Pearl Studios up and up and up in detroit with chuck so cool and uh, like like steven said finish finish that full length and uh you know get that rolling into you know into into obviously the latter part of 2021 but you know mm -hmm. um just moving forward uh because like steven said we've got we've just got we've got dozens and dozens of songs and um you know it's just and that doesn't include anything that we collaboratively write on a weekly basis you know so we you know, we've just got so much material that that we're so anxious to get out. So so but we're going to be one of those bands that even if, you know, even when shows start picking up, we're going to we've already we've already booked time to to get back in the studio. So that's going to happen. Hey, nothing like being proactive. You, get, you, you know, it. you got to. You got to. Exactly. All <laughs> right. So my last question for you guys here is for the first time listener of your music, what message would you like to pass off to them? Steven, you're starting that one. Love and vulnerability. It's a good one. Doug, you're second. You can't say love and vulnerability either. <laughs> I think Doug's doing a freaking backflip. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it's I guess I would say, you know, just variety. Uh, I think that's going to be a, a huge part of this music is all the influences coming together and a lot of different styles. So I think that's the message, you know, I'd like to get across is like exposing yourself to lots of different styles is, is always good. So I will say vulnerability, but I'll say humility. Um, and I'll say, um, I'll say passion. You know, I think, uh, like I said earlier, I think I, I really believe in this band. I believe in, in, in all of us because there's really, I mean, I'll say it, I don't care. I don't, I don't I'm not trying to be cheeky or, or sound conceited. There's, there's nothing that this band can't do the four of this, that the four of us, there's, there really isn't. And there's nothing that we won't try. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I think, I think just, just staying passionate about it and, um, and collaborating. I think that's that's the goal. Beautiful. I think that's the perfect ending. Uh, Chris, Doug, mm -hmm. Stephen, thank you so much for taking the time to speak. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. For everyone else out there, Sweet Molasses is out. Listen to it, stream it, and obviously I'm going to be staying tuned for more. I can't wait for it. Just based off what you guys have said and your inspirations, I'm really looking forward to seeing the kind of diverse range of sound that you're uh, that you're going to put out soon enough. Yes. And thank you, Austin. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Birthday, you're man. so welcome. Yeah. Um, yeah, I sincerely hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and I, I really do look forward to speaking soon. Yeah, for sure, man. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks so dearly. All right. See you All guys. Right. See you guys. See you. Bye.